Whether you want to know more about heart surgeries, I'm here to tell you today about my experience of viewing one at Porter Venice Hospital um, under the uh, supervision of Sanjay Tripathi and his staff. This is where my story begins. Here on the screen is Dr. Tripathi. Um, you might have seen pictures of him if you're ever looking into the 5280. But um, once I met up with him and I was changed into all my proper equipment to be around on the OR floor, which is very um, locked up if you're trying to get in as an outsider. Um, here is, he told me a little bit about his studying, how he studied over in India. Um, and then... He took me to the pre-op room, which you'll see in a second here. Is This is where I met the patient who was going to have the heart surgery. Here, the patient is all prepped for surgery. And, you know, he told me a little bit about himself um, and told me why he really appreciated me for viewing his surgery. After talking to the patient, um, I, Dr. Chapathi handed me off to his perfusionist, which is a future career I'm interested in. And he introduced me to the OR room, which surprisingly is huge. So in it, you're going to have storage within the OR room. You're going to have lights. You're going to have televisions, which show that, uh, show any, um, circulation, uh, like blood pressure, um, heart rate, all the good stuff that the doctor can be able to look up and just see. And so here you'll see um, all the, the bed, which has um, already been prepped for the patient to come in and lie down and then later be prepped. Um, so it's a very large space because you're going to have about eight to nine individuals in this room at all times. So it's very large. Next here are some pictures of tools. So these are all the tools that these scrubbed in surgical technologists have to prep. So each doctor has their own specified tools that they like to use. So they're very particular in what they like to use. And here you'll see saws. You'll see all the draping that's required. Um, here above I'm just showing you guys um, all the tools. And then here are just some more. They have like tables that they can move back and forth that are going to hold instruments that they might need to put off side of the body um as you see it's a lot of prep time to get everything right so here are some tubing the green rags are actually called laps and those all have to be accounted for at the end of the surgery and just um just the usual you uh, probably remember the blue draping I feel like that's kind of normal for any surgery Next is just um, a bath that they have that keeps everything warm. Like if they need water to wash off something or they need colder water. Um, it's all in this little funky little bath thing that they sit off on the edge. And these are all pictures that my father has captured for me since I wasn't allowed to have my phone since I was just viewing. Here's another view of tables that they might have. These are all going to be pushed off to the side or back of the t uh, surgery table. And these are all just little things that they're going to be able to put stuff on because there is limited space but there's a lot of tools as you saw in the first one. Those tools we all distributed throughout these tables here. And here for a last look is just another table that is off to the side that has like an improvised trash can or collection. So at the end of the surgery, they actually have to account for everything that is used. So that way any trash, it goes in there if they're removing it from a tool. And such here you'll see clamps, scissors, um, stitching thread, um, just all the kind of extra tools. A lot of tools go into surgeries, believe it or not. Once the patient is prepped, I won't show any pictures of this because really you're not going to see any pictures of it. No one's really going to take any unless I don't want to get too graphic because they're pretty much sticking in a catheter, which is something that collects your urine. Next, a separate doctor will come in and do what is essentially called vein harvesting. So in this particular case, I watched a maze procedure, which is just fixing um, veins in the heart that are not feeding blood correctly. And so in this just diagram up here just shows different methods of ways a doctor would harvest the vein so it can be used in the heart and they usually collect it down from the leg. 
as the harvesting is going on down on the lower body, the surgeon, Dr. Tripathi, has already begun to cut open the chest. Here I just use a stock image because I wasn't allowed to take any images of this part. Um, so essentially they have a sticky sheet that sits over the skin of the chest and they'll begin cutting with a scalpel and later we'll go on with a saw, but that's a little too graphic so I won't show that. Once the heart and chest is fully exposed here, um, and clamps and everything is pulled apart so you can see into the chest, um, a perfusionist will hand tubes over to the doctor and the doctor will insert them and then the perfusionist will then later just control all the oxygen levels and carbon dioxide levels to make sure that the blood is being fully processed as the heart is essentially stopped for this procedure so it's easier to work on. Here is a better view for how, what I was seeing. I was not at the foot of the patient but I was actually behind the clear draping and this is where I could see. The doctor would point out things to me and talk to me and I was able to literally stick my head over the sheet and view everything that was going on. Um, here I could see all the perfusionist tubes, all the blood flowing out of the body. I could see all suturing going in, the vein being put in. And this actually, this process is actually three to four hours and sometimes up, up to six hours long. Once that is completed, we move on to essentially bringing everything back together using wires, metal wires to shape the, um, to shape everything back into place, stitch it up, and this is how someone's chest is going to look like after the procedure. And it's pretty frightening this step because anything that they go wrong, they don't want to leave anything in, so all counting is called for. Like I said, the regs earlier, the laps, are always accounted for because usually you can leave something inside the body. Overall, the process is very, very, very long, but I think it's very important to note that this surgery is something that people are faced with the only answer to. So I was surprised that the doctor was so calm and confident of himself. He doesn't speak loudly. They were playing music during the surgery. It was just a very humbling experience talking to the patient before, which I did not know happened. And um, above is a personal photo of my sister and I um, when we got to view it. My dad was actually assisting in the surgery, so it was really nice to hear the doctor and him talk through the surgery and have everyone kind of comment on it and give us our feedback. Um, I just think, you know, once we stepped back when I was no longer allowed, allowed behind the draping, how easy uh, just the staff moves down from the surgery. And I think that's something so important that I took away from it all was that this is just day to day. They're so used to this. And the fact that people are so used to just saving lives all the time, these surgeries are not for the faint of heart.